So let's make a little Java app application with a GUI or an app as we call them nowadays. So we say new uh, class. I already created a project, so I just need a new class. I'm going to call it a button. Or uh, let's just call it the frame, main frame, let's say. And um, so the idea is that this class is going to be our frame. Which a frame is uh, a window. What you know as a window, we're going to need a J frame. This, uh, this class is going to extend uh, Java Swing J frame. Its name is going to be mainframe, and uh, we're going to need a main in there. Boom. Um, I can close that, and there it is. It just doesn't do anything right now. The way we're going to do this is our main is just going to create an instance of that class. Frame is the new main frame. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to need a constructor, public main frame. And here's where we're going to put the magic. So the first thing we need to do is set the size of the window of the frame that we want, 200 by 200. And then we're going to set the visible to true. And if I just do those two things, I run it, and I should get the 200 by 200 window. And you see there's nothing in there. I haven't put anything there, but it's running. I can go here and quit my main frame. And uh, so let's say before we send that to visible, let's put something in there. Let's start with a label. So all these things, labels, and buttons, and menu items, they're all widgets. Uh, they all have different names. So a label is like, uh, say, this, this part up here, this here. So it's a piece of text that's on the window, but you can the user cannot edit it directly. So we're going to say the hello, call the hello label. Usually you call this like that. Hello world. Uh, so with my label, I need to, of course, import Java Swings J label. And also, if I just do that, that's not going to work because I haven't put the label in the frame. To do that, it's a little bit long. I need to define a container content is a get content pane so i guess i need to import that the container um, so the within the frame there's a container and in the container is where you put stuff uh, that's all you need to know for now uh, we also need to set the layout i'll explain this in a little bit so i'm going to say content dot set well Layout to be the new. I'm gonna go with a flow layout. I'll explain in a second. Again, command one and flow flow layout. Finally, I can now do content dot add. Uh, hello label. And uh, I'm gonna run that. Hello world. So awesome. So we got a window with a little label that says hello world. Pretty simple, right? So uh, there's all these other weird stuff here. Uh, so let me explain that. The uh, basically within the frame, there's a container. You can only put stuff inside the container, uh, which I'm calling content. So you get it using get content pane, and then I can add that label content dot add. I can uh, I can add more labels, right? So let's say I have another label here. Well, let's put it over here. Uh, so that's a hello label, the, you know, how are you label. Call it how are you. And content.add, how are you label. And then I run that, and you see it says hello world, how are you. Um, so that's how I add things, and basically that's going to be doing what I can, how you add things to your GUI. Notice if I make it smaller, then it flips down like that. So that that's what the flow layout does. So the question is, when you I add the second one, where does it go? In the flow layout, in the first one you add, it goes the same way you write. So the first one you add goes here in the top left, then the next one here, and then uh, goes to the end of the line, moves to the next line, next line, next line, right? 
so that is the flow just as you would write so that's why when I make the window smaller it flows down here notice that you know as I make the window bigger and smaller the size of the text does not change right all that stays the same that's what the layout does for you right it uh, lets your application change sizes uh, and reflows the buttons nicely uh, or labels in this case uh, you probably want a button at this point so let's add a button a button is J button uh, we're gonna call it the OK button is a new J button OK and uh, oops. and again command one I'm gonna import that button and uh, let's have two buttons right the OK and the cancel uh, cancel button and that one says cancel so I have my OK button, my cancel button, and then I'm gonna go and add them in. OK button to the content. OK button, cancel button. Right, add both of those in, and there you go, run it. There you go, hello world, OK cancel. You notice if I click on them, nothing happens. Um, but they, they flow just the same way, right? Uh, if I make it long, they'll go into one line. If I make it smaller, they go like that. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, one thing, more thing is I want to show you if you hit the red button, which is supposed to quit the application, it doesn't actually quit it. You see, it's still running here. Um, so I have to actually quit it this way. We would like that not to happen. So we would like to, when you re hit the red button, the application should quit. The way we do that and the way you implement activities in, in your GUI application is by writing event handlers. So the basic idea is simple. Whenever the user clicks a button, like this button or that button, um, that calls, that generates an event and you have to write a method to handle that event. So you are writing event handlers. Those are methods that handle events. So basically, to put it simply, whenever the user presses a button, there's a method that you wrote that gets run to handle that button press. So the first one is this red button here. This is going to generate the uh, window closing event. And uh, the way you fix this, uh, we're going to have to create a new class. Let me see. Uh, we're going to create a new class. I'm going to call it the uh, window adapter. Class and uh, it's super class. Oh, I'm sorry, it's gonna be the super class is gonna be window adapter. That's the super class, and uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna call it the window event handler. And there's my new class and extends window adapter. I can then go over here, source, um, override, implement methods, and uh, it shows you all the methods that window adapter has. And, and in this case, I want the window closing one. I'm gonna hit OK. And so you see all that does is adds this public void window closing. So what I'm doing is I'm over, I am overriding the window closing event from the window adapter class, which has it defined, but its actual definition doesn't do anything. I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna say system exit zero. Okay, so I have a simple method here called window closing that just exits the program uh, with my window event handler class. So I have to then go back here and then register this. So I say add window listener as a new window event handler and then I can run it and if I click this now it quits so to explain this what, what we just did is we added a window listener to our whole application and this is it right and that window listener has one method, which is the window closing. 
So this handles whenever the user closes the window by whatever method uh, he can use, uh, this method is going to get called. And what this method does is it just exits the program. So if the user closes that window, uh, in this case, this window and the mainframe window, um, we're going to call that method. I'm actually going to quit the program. Okay, let's do another one for the button. So the for the buttons, uh, it's the same idea. I'm going to do it a little bit different here. Um, so we're going to do it down here. So uh, the buttons raise uh, different types of implement, sorry, implement action listener. So there's the other interface, which is the action listener. I have to import it. And uh, you see, I, I said this class is now going to implement this action listener. This broke this because now I have to add the unimplemented method because that interface defines two new, uh, just one new method, sorry, the action performed. And uh, that is basically, this method is the one that gets called whenever uh, an action is performed. This is like a button click. Uh, so let's just do a simple thing. I'm going to say action perform action dot uh, get action. So I'm just going to have that guy print out that method, just print out the action uh, that was actually performed, you know, printed on the console. And then I'm going to go over to my buttons here. Um, and uh, have my OK button and my cancel button, and I say OK button dot add uh, listener, right? Action listener. I'm gonna add an action listener, and I say this. And similarly for the cancel button, add action listener. This. So what I'm doing is adding a listener to both buttons. The listener is this class. This can be a little confusing, right? So the mainframe class. But uh, what this is, means is that you know it's an instance of a class. Has to be an instance of a class uh, that implements the action listener. Well, this class now implements the action listener, which is just this one method, right? But basically, what this is saying. Is that whenever the can the one of these buttons gets pressed, the can the OK button or the cancel button, I'm gonna call the action perform method on this object here, right? Which in this case is this. And so I'm gonna end up calling this method, which is gonna print out that action command. When I run it, you see if I hit the OK button, uh, then the console pops up. Move this over here, and you see it printed out OK. Uh, similarly, if I hit the cancel button, it's cancel, cancel, OK, OK, OK. Uh, so that's how that works. We can do that. Uh, now let's say uh, I wanted to, instead of just printing out OK and cancel, I wanted it to actually change. Uh, the label. So we have this how are you label. Let's say I wanted to print, change that label to say whatever the user typed in. Well, I'm going to need to do this. I'm going to need to say, you know, private. I'm going to need to move this J label, how are you label declaration uh, over here. You see why I put this in a class, in the same class now. Um, and then I can get rid of that, so that works, right? So I move that over there. So now J label, you know, the how are you label is an instance of the class, so that means that I can access it from here. So the how are you label is available to me there, and I can set the text of that label to action get uh, action command, right? So when I run that, yeah, if I, if I click OK, it says hello world, OK. If I click cancel, hello world, cancel. 
Okay, cancel. Okay. Right. And that's how I can do that. Uh, so that is generally, that is how you change the state. So these labels, all these labels and buttons, uh, if you declare them as instances of your class, that means that your event handlers will have access to them. So whenever the user, you do an action, he can now, you can now then go and change the labels or buttons or canvases or panels or whatever you have in there uh, dynamically. And when you change them, they will change as you saw in real time.